Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 2000 series PLC tag database. The Productivity Suite software allows us to use tags in the PLC. Tags are a method of assigning and referencing memory locations or numbering systems within the programmable logic controller. They allow a more structured programming approach and are stored within the tag database. A tag database is stored in the memory of the Productivity series of PLCs from Automation Direct. Do not overthink tags. Tags are just names that we assign to variables or numbering systems of any data type stored in the PLC memory. We will now look at the numbering systems and database used with Productivity 2000 controller. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we will do is take a look and you'll see my ladder logic here that I have from last time when we did the um, online programming. And what you'll see is that uh, we can do the tag database online or offline, but we will call it up. And you can call up the tag database in two different ways. The first way is we can look under the right program right here under the applications tool on our main screen, or we can hit edit and then tag database. Either way, we'll come up with the tag database itself. And we have actually two sections of the, uh, actually three sections basically of the tag database. We have the tags to show up here. This is our navigation and our way of displaying the information in the editor, which is the second part here. The bottom part actually tells us how to add tags, delete tags, um, the memory, uh, memory tent of memory uh, bytes and the forcible tag counts. And we can reset the table or we can go for the help. So the first one is our tags to show. And on our tags to show, what you'll see here, I have discrete inputs, discrete outputs and strings. And they're the ones I'm currently using in this program. If I delete strings, you'll see that I just have my discrete inputs and outputs. I can add strings back. I can also show all and it shows all of the um, ones I have or if I invert that it shows nothing and then I can select again this discrete inputs, discrete outputs and strings. The other thing that I could do is actually if I have, if I um, show all and then revert it, we show nothing again, I can actually search for strings. So let's search for um, work and you can see we have a work bit right here because it has the name of it work in that we could also put jog and when I put jog you'll see that we have two tags we have a jog which is a screen input at this location here or we have a jog work bit so both ways we can get to that same location or view these tags Let's uh, turn on our discrete inputs, outputs, and our uh, strings again. And what you'll notice is that we have a certain order that we have here. We can actually switch those orders around if we want to. So looking at the editor itself, what we can do is we have this, um, we can make columns wider and you'll see this is the in use and it's actually sorted right now by in use. So that's why we see all the names here automatically coming up and if we want we can move that over and we can put it right there so we can move these th things around you can see forcible is clicked for the first one so i can force that motor on and off if i wish we could all also do that with the inputs and outputs just by turning them on and off here then we have retentive so we can make this retentive if we want to or the initial value here so different ways of, of looking at the data itself we can actually resize these columns. And if you right click on here, you'll actually see we have several different more columns than what's actually shown. If we cho hit choose columns, a display will now be um, up updated. And say we can add and remove different columns themselves. So let's, uh, we won't need the mod bus start and end. So let's remove those and we'll just hit OK. And you can see that it automatically removes those and we get a different look 
all together. So the other thing we can do is we go down here, we can actually add tags. And when we add tags, it will come up and we can add different types of tags themselves. Now, Boolean is a true and false on or off, and they're used for discrete IO point tag names, as well as internal tag names for use in your ladder logic. Integer, 8-bit unsigned, these whole or natural numbers range from 0 to 255 or 0 to FF hexadecimal. They are used for numeric tags only when positive vari variables will be used within a byte boundary. Your integer 16-bit signed is a range. It goes from minus 32,768 to 32,767. These are used for numerical tags where variables have the potential for negative or positive values. Now, integer 16-bit um, BCD, or actually I should go, first of all, we should go integer 16-bit signed, which is a range from minus, like we said, minus 30, and then we go integer 16-bit um, unsigned is a range from 0 to 65,535. These are used for tags that will only have a positive number. Then we have the integer 16-bit BCD. And so this is an unsigned binary coded decimal or BCD. And we'll have the range from 0 to 9,999. These are used for tags that only be represented by the decimal numbering system, 0 to 9 for each digit. Then we have the integer 32-bit sign. The range is minus uh, uh, 2,147,483,648 to 2,147,483,000, uh, 1,647. They're used for, as a default for most numeric tags that have a potential for both negative and positive. So that's your default. And integer, 32-bit BCD. So it's an unsigned binary decimal, have a range of zero to 99,999,999. And they're used for tags that only can be registered represented by the decimal numbering system. Again, zero to nine for each digit. Now your float 32-bit, that uses the IEEE uh, format for floating point range. And it's from minus 3.93 times 10 to the 38 to 3.99 times 10 to the 38. Now this data type is used for tags that need to be re reading in this format. Then we have strings. And strings uh, use ASCII or text represented, which allocates one byte or eight bits per character. These are used for tags that are words when using instructions like ASCII, email, and the LCD that we had previously. And the last one we do is actually a constant. Now, you can have actually a constant in your variables, and a constant um, is a fixed value for an numeric or Boolean tag name and constants can be integers, floating point, or strings. And when you enter a constant, the field defined by the data assumes the range. For example, if I put one in, it's automatically assuming 32 bits signed integer. If I put 1.0, it assumes floating point. If I put the letter A, it assumes a string. And we have links below that will show you um, a good overview of all of these different numbering systems. So all we do is add the tag here, and we can do this prior to actually programming the, the controller in our ladder logic, or we can fill it out as we need them in the ladder logic. So then we have a delete tags, right? and then we have a reset table. And when we hit the reset, well, when we first of all, when we delete tags, you hold on, and then you hit the delete tag. Or you can select multiples by using the shift and it'll go from the start from the bottom, or if individual ones, if you hold the control button, you can you can select individual tags. And then we have a reset table, and the reset table will just reset the table back to the original format that we had. So, very good use of tags and to what tag bay database is, and you can find information very quickly using the search and order those tags the way you want to see them. To get out of the tag database, hit the X in the upper left-hand corner. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. 
If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.